Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, microgrid, microgrid webinar presented by Opal RT Technologies. Uh, we are really pleased to have you all this morning with us, and uh, hopefully you get better weather than what we have uh, here in Montreal this rainy and cold morning. So today, your hosts are myself, François Bertolo, engineer at Opal RT Technologies. Our demo lead, my colleague Amin Yaman, our EMS team leader from Opal RT Technologies, uh, will be presenting as well. And we are very pleased to have our special keynote speaker, Eric Lempecker, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Here is the presentation outline for today's webinar. So we will start with a brief microgrid introduction and talk about the challenges related to real-time simulation for microgrids. We will then be presenting four different applications, have a live demo of a microgrid connected to a distribution system. Our colleague from MIT Lincoln Lab will present his microgrid controller HIL demo platform, and we will uh, have a brief conclusion before having a period for your various questions. So first, an introduction to microgrids. Well, the uh, definition of the United States Department of Energy microgrid exchange group goes like this. A microgrid is a group of interconnected loads and distributed energy resources within clearly defined electrical boundaries that acts as a single controllable entity with respect to the grid. A microgrid can connect and disconnect from the grid to enable it to operate in both grid connected and island mode. At Opal Artis, our vision on microgrid's real-time simulation goes like this. Initially limited to the most classical power system components, microgrid simulations are now expanding to very detailed power electronics and, most important, the interaction between the two. So what we're seeing here is that classical power system components of microgrids are typically wind turbines, PVs, energy storage units, generators, transmission lines, loads, controls, AC grids, and now we're coupling all this with power electronic components such as wind turbine converters, PV inverters, energy storage inverters, and grid tie inverters. Now, one thing that is very important is how can we have a real-time interaction between those two groups of components. Now, at Opal RT, we also consider that ship power systems and more electrical aircraft can be considered as microgrids, mainly because they bring the same uh, type of challenges in terms of real-time simulation. So the first challenge related to power system is actually the fact that there are complex AC systems with very short lines that need to be simulated in real time. So when we're simulating large microgrids and distribution systems uh, that they are connected to, parallel processing is required in order to distribute the computation load. Parallel processing necessarily implies using various decoupling techniques that are based on line propagation delays. Okay? And these decoupling techniques with delays, well, they can be compensated in AC systems with long transmission lines, uh, but long transmission lines are typically not available in microgrids. So our solution to this at Opal RT is called Artemis SSN, and SSN states for State Space Nodal. And it's actually a power system solver that takes advantage of both state space and nodal approaches, giving it the capability to first solve state space tasks in parallel on different processors. So therefore, we can benefit from uh, the parallel computing capabilities of the system and then compute all the common admittance nodal equations on a single processor, therefore not introducing any artificial delays. Okay? And uh, all this is actually occurring within the same real-time simulation step, this technology being unique to Opal RT technologies. So Artemis SSN allows power systems engineers to decouple a microgrid, well, first without introducing any artificial delays uh, due to the decoupling technique in use. It's also helping to decouple microgrid without being a parallel computing expert or a CPU architecture expert. And finally, 
you can decouple your microgrid without using or adding long transmission lines or stub lines only for the purpose of achieving successful numerical simulation. The second challenge related to uh, the fact that there are several fast power electronics in uh, today's microgrids. So power converters play a very important role in microgrids. Due to their dynamics, they have to be simulated at faster rates compared to the AC system we just talked about. So for viable accuracy to be achieved, update rates below 2 microseconds typically need to be reached by the simulation platform. Okay. And based on our experience, we have seen that those performances can only be achieved by simulating the power converters on FPGA, the CPU being uh, too slow and not capable of going at such high rates. The challenge here is that FPGA programming is typically more challenging than CPU programming. What we're seeing here on the table is that for standard power grid simulation in AC systems, typical time steps between 20 to 50 microseconds are viable and can be achieved on CPU technologies. But when we want to simulate high frequency power electronics, then we're talking about typical time steps between 200 to 800 nanoseconds, therefore uh, needing the FPGA technology. Our solution to this at Opal RT is called EHS, which is our electrical hardware solver. And this allows us to simulate fast power converter circuits with time steps ranging from 150 nanoseconds to 2 microseconds. Okay? And the main advantage of this solution is that you do not need any FPGA expertise or FPGA programming in order to achieve this. It has direct interfaces with well-known power electronic simulation tools such as SimPower Systems, PSIM, Plex, and Multisim. Uh, of course, you can test different scenarios and change different parameters without rebuilding any code. And eventually, EHS is a perfect tool for you to achieve controller hardware in the loop, C-Hill, real-time simulations. Now, this is good for attending the second challenge, and we saw that Artemis SSN was good to uh, attend the first challenge. Well, the interesting uh, idea here is that EHS is actually interfaced with the slower AC systems running at 20 to 50 microseconds on standard multi-core simulators using Artemis SSN. Therefore, both tools can be combined together for full microgrid real-time simulation. We will now present you four different microgrid applications uh, that you might uh, be looking at. The first application is multi-agent systems. Okay? In multi-agent systems, there is a need for real-time interaction between all the microgrid components. Ultimately, the idea is to be able to achieve controller hardware in the loop with an objective closed loop time of one microsecond or even faster. And there's a need to have detailed power converter simulation, therefore uh, using dedicated solvers for power electronics, having fast sampling analog inputs and analog outputs for uh, different types of measurements, and fast sampling of digital input and digital output for pulse width modulation types of signals. So, what we're seeing is that we're simulating a virtual microgrid where actual controllers are available in the lab and have direct interaction with the simulator. So we're talking wind turbine controllers, PV controllers, energy storage controllers, or other type of controllers. Now, we understand that you typically might not have access to all those controllers in the lab or they not, might not be all uh, readily available. So at Opal RT, we can provide you with additional uh, hardware boards based on Texas Instruments microcontrollers, which can run the control logic and interact with the real-time simulation of a microgrid. And such controllers can be interfaced and interconnected together in order to ensure that you're really having a multi-agent system simulation. The second application is based on supervisory control, where instead of interfacing the real-time simulation with the controllers directly, we interface ourselves with a supervisory controller or SCADA system. Okay? So in this case, the virtual grid is being simulated and interact with an actual SCADA system. We need to make sure that we can monitor and report various measurements 
And of course, we need to make sure that we can use time critical communication networks such as IEC 61850, C37118, the NP3, Modbus, OPC, and IEC 104. All this integrated for supervisory control. One well known application now is power hardware in the loop. Okay, so when it's related to microgrid, we're talking about an interface between a virtual grid and actual emulators, inverters, motors. We need to make sure that we have increased stability due to the fact that power amplifiers are now in the loop. And one of the challenge of this application is actually selecting the right power amplifier based on uh, your needs. So depending on the power, the bandwidth, uh, is it a two quadrant versus four quadrant, AC versus DC, sampling frequency, um, all those elements have to be taken into account to select the right power amplifiers. At Opal RT, we're working with various third party manufacturers uh, of amplifiers, so we can help you uh, selecting the right one for your application. And uh, in this case, the real time simulator, uh, simulating the virtual grid is actually interface with a power amplifier, which then connects to uh, wind turbine emulators, PV emulators, grid loads, and uh, motors, inverters, so it's pretty flexible at this level. The fourth application is or microgrid simulation accelerator. Okay, so in this case, we're not talking necessarily about real-time simulation, but faster than real-time simulation. So we want to have as fast as possible simulation. For this, we need dedicated processing and computing power. And ultimately, what we want to obtain is faster than real-time results with data recording, which we can reuse using fast commercial off-the-shelf products that are uh, easily upgradable in the future, and or objectives to run compiled executables. Now, based on our experience here, we have seen that we can have an average accelerator factor of 10 to 1, okay? So this means that, for example, if you want to simulate a 10 seconds phenomena and that this simulation takes you 60 seconds to achieve an offline simulation, uh, it would take you 10 seconds in real time and you could eventually achieve 6 seconds in faster than real time. So you can think that for all the PhD students out there, instead of finishing your degree in six years, maybe you'll be able to finish it in five years. Brief overview of our capabilities based on those applications. Well, we have different solutions and they allow you to cover the complete spectrum of power systems and power electronics found in microgrid applications. And all those solutions are actually running on the same hardware platform. And those solutions can actually interact between themselves for uh, co-simulation at various simulation time steps. We will now be presenting the first poll. Okay, we have two polls uh, during this presentation. So we would like to have your input on the following question. In your research, what are the main microgrid applications? And this is a multiple choice question, so you can select more than one. And you have a few seconds to answer between multi-agent systems, supervisory control, power hardware in the loop, microgrid simulation accelerator, or other. And um, feel free, if you select other, we have the chat. You could uh, list us what are your uh, main applications. So we are now ready for our live demo, okay? And to give you a brief overview, today we're presenting you a microgrid system that you're seeing here that is attached to a 615 nodes distribution system. Now the main features of this demo are that uh, Artemis SSN blocks are used to decouple the distribution systems into 13 independent parallel groups, okay? The full model is running on three cores at 50 microseconds, and the PV and the energy storage inverters are simulated using advanced interpolation techniques. I will now pass the hand to my colleague Amin Yaman, who will be presenting this demo. Hello, everybody. 
Um, so um, uh, actually, the, the microgrid application uh, that we, we will present today um, uh, can be seen as a test benchmark that uh, can be uh, uh, used in various field of research. Uh, so it can be used uh, academically in the university for the um, understanding of uh, the, the operation of the microgrid by uh, simulating um, the, the, the complete system in real time using the, the Opal RT simulator. Uh, can you share your screen? Uh, the screen? We're not seeing the, the panel right now. Yes, because I will just uh, uh, talk a, a little bit about the setup. Okay. Hello, Francois? Yes. So you can see my screen now? Uh, no, right now we're seeing connected to go to webinar. Okay. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay. So, um, as I was uh, saying, um, uh, the, the application is a test benchmark that can be used uh, uh, for uh, various uh, uh, fields of research. So, it can be used also for uh, rapid prototype, uh, control prototyping by uh, connecting um, a real controller uh, uh, to the simulator through the digital and the analog uh, input-outputs. Uh, it can be used also uh, in the protection domain uh, for uh, the, the relay protection uh, tests, uh, etc. So the model was developed uh, using uh, MATLAB SimPower system, and uh, once it is compiled, uh, it can be transferred uh, to the to the simulator for a real-time uh, simulation. So actually here. Here, uh, uh, the model can be linked to uh, this uh, kind of interfaces. Uh, the, the, the basic application actually comes with these four uh, interfaces. So uh, the first interface here, uh, it shows the, 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 an overview about the system. So uh, we have here uh, a wind turbine. Uh, delivering a maximum power of 10 kilowatt. We have here a PV that is delivering uh, a maximum power of 5 kilowatts through this two-level uh, inverter. Uh, we have also uh, uh, some loads representing uh, some neighborhoods, and we have a backup battery that will absorb or deliver the power difference between the, gener the generated power and the, the demand power. So here, this is uh, a global uh, interface that uh, leads to understand a little bit the operation of the microgrid. So the operator can, for example, increase the, the PV power uh, and also the wind power, as you can see here. And then we can see that actually the generated power is more than the, 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 the demand. So the battery is actually uh, recovering this power. And then uh, we can see here in this indicator the state of charge of the battery. Uh, so we can see that is, it is uh, charged at 90%. So um, actually we can disconnect our battery and then sell the power to the power distributor. Um, uh, so this, is, uh, this, this interface actually is for the operator or for the undergraduate student uh, to, to understand the, the basics of the microgrid. Uh, we have also some other kind of uh, interfaces that are more uh, detailed. So here we show the uh, acquisition from the PV system. So we have the, the voltage of the PV uh, at the DC side, the current, and the voltage current uh, at the AC side, and here we have uh, the, the power delivered by the PV. So actually we can uh, uh, apply some uh, 24 hours uh, uh, profiles, so we test the PV model, for example, uh, as you can see here, so at in the evening there is no sun, so there is no power, and then it, it starts to increase, uh, it achieves a maximum at midday, and then it starts to go down to zero, and the power also, as you can see here. 
So uh, uh, also the insulation or the irradiance can be uh, can be uh, controlled manually, as you can see here, and then we can see uh, the the behavior of the PV system and compare it to the theoretical or to the experiment results. So um, uh, uh, here we have another tab that will. Uh, gives the that will give the the result from the battery and the behavior of the battery. So uh, we can also uh, apply some 24 hours load profile this time. So we can see that the control uh, will uh, ask the battery to always follow the the power difference, as you can see here. And then if the battery uh, is disconnected, so it's the distributor that will be uh, 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 that will deliver the the difference of the power, as you can see here from this uh, uh, graph. So uh, for the for the wind turbine, we have a wind turbine here, so we can do mini tests. I am showing only the the principal tests, but uh, we can do uh, uh, many other tests on the PV on the battery side or in the uh, in the wind turbine side. So here I am applying a 24 hours wind profile uh, and then uh, uh, we can see the behavior uh, of the wind turbine. We have here the voltage, the current, uh, the power and the speed of the rotor. So this kind of tests, for example, can be used to uh, validate the, the, the model uh, of simulation of the wind turbine by comparing, by applying this kind of profiles and uh, uh, comparing the result with the experimental results uh, collected from the real life. So um, another uh, kind of test that we can, or another field of uh, application of this, uh, of this kind of uh, uh, platform, test platform, is the, the, the transient or the fault study. So uh, people usually uh, what they want what they want to do is they have a distribution network and uh, they want to connect uh, their microgrid but uh, they want to protect it. So they want to see uh, uh, the the influence of a fault in different location of the distribution network on the microgrid. So uh, so here uh, we can do uh, mini uh, uh, tests or mini kind of tests uh, in this domain. So, for example, here I will show uh, the case of uh, 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 AB to ground fault at one of the buses uh, closer to the to the microgrid. Uh, so here we can see the influence of these faults. Uh, this is the bus where the fault is applied. This is the voltage and the current at that bus. And here we have the voltage, the AC voltage and AC current uh, in, the, in, the, in the microgrid side. So here we can see clearly the influence of these faults on the microgrid uh, by this voltage sag here and uh, this uh, uh, fault current here. And we can see it uh, in, the, in the power uh, graph also. So uh, actually what we will do is uh, uh, we can island completely our uh, microgrid so we have no influence uh, from the faults and then once we uh, repair uh, once we repair uh, our uh, fault so we can go back and reconnect to the battery again without any problem. Uh, so here in brief, uh, 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 some tests. We can also, uh, for people that are, uh, uh, let's connect our battery again. And then uh, uh, here for the people that are studying really faults, they, they are interested, uh, interested by um, uh, varying, the, by varying the, 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 for example, the fault duration, as we can do here. So this is a fault generation that we that we have done, but it can be uh, 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 that it can be custom for uh, for uh, any application. So here we will see that uh, the fault will move. So people uh, are interested 
uh, by uh, moving the fault and studying or uh, analyzing the, the fault current based on the instant uh, when it will arrive to the system. Uh, we can also uh, vary the, the duration of the fault as you can see here. So here the duration will, will, uh, will vary uh, periodically. So uh, here in brief, the kind of fault that we can apply, the kind of uh, test that we can apply. Uh, there are many other tests that we can do, uh, and I will keep them for the, the discussion and the, 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 the questions uh, session. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Amin, for this uh, for this demo. We will now be um, transferring the lead to Eric Limpecker from the MIT Lincoln Laboratory about the microgrid controller HIL demo platform. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Eric. You can go ahead. All right. So my name is Eric Limpocker. At, uh, I'm the assistant group leader of the Energy Systems Group at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. We're a Department of Defense research lab um, that also does work for Homeland Security and Department of Energy. Um, we've been focusing on in, you know, ways to increase energy resilience for the country, and uh, we see microgrids as one of the, the key ways of doing that. We've been looking at ways to decrease the barriers to micro deployment, accelerate their deployment, and decrease their risk. And uh, we developed this uh, microgrid controller hardware loop demonstration platform as a way to, to go down that path and hopefully accelerate deployment of microgrids. Um, everything I'm about to say has been cleared for public release. so. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to, to sharing this with you and getting your feedback. So we break uh, power system test beds into these five categories. Um, anything that's a circle is, is simulation. Anything that's a square is hardware. So on one end, you could do a pure simulation and say MATLAB sim power systems. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you could wait until the full system is built and, um, and uh, do testing on that. And they're, they're clearly challenges with both, you know, with simulation, the, val the validity in, in, uh, of, your, of your models, the lack of having the actual device controller software is a challenge. Um, but obviously on the full system, while, the, while their tests are, you know, as realistic as they can be, you can't really test edge conditions without risking damage to your equipment. So there are a couple of steps in between. We see power test beds as an option, um, where you, say, get a small generator or a small inverter and you know, use the actual device controller as a microcontroller, um, but that's also fairly expensive. You can do power hardware in the loop, as was mentioned earlier, but that requires some fairly expensive equipment. You also risk damage to your uh, power equipment. And then, the, then there's controller hardware in the loop, where you basically put all the dangerous high voltage, high power equipment, uh, your distribution system, your inverters, your generators, your protection equipment, into simulation. And you trick the actual device controllers into thinking they're controlling their target devices. And that way you can get uh, high fidelity, high realism um, at a, a lower cost and lower risk to your equipment than if you were to do one of these other options. So for that reason, we've been focusing on developing controller hardware loop. This kind of covers the, uh, the trade-offs in terms of cost, fidelity, and coverage. By fidelity, I mean the uh, accuracy of your, sim of your test. Um, and you know, driven largely by whether or not you're running the actual control code that will be in the final system. And test coverage, what I mean is, you know, can, can you test the edge conditions without risking damage to your equipment? So we see control hardware loop as kind of a, a, in the sweet spot of, uh, doing, um, of doing power system testing, microgrid testing, and reducing risk. Um, we, uh, and one feedback we've gotten from utilities is that this is fairly compelling because it allows you to do 
three things. It allows you to do your steady state analysis, allows you to do your dynamic and transient analysis, and it also allows you to take the controls behavior into account, which currently other you know, tools that are traditionally used in power system or distribution system analysis can't do. So for our simulation, we ran at a rate of 80 microseconds. You can sell, see, see that's well above the uh, Nyquist frequency for fault transients for the power controller response. You know, it's more than double that frequency. Um, it also allows you to take into account, you know, the, the higher level secondary and tertiary control as well. So uh, we see controller hardware loop as, as fairly compelling because it allows uh, utility system engineers to do their steady state, dynamic, transient, and control behavior analysis all in one um, platform. So we, uh, we simulated this system. It's a 8 megawatt microgrid um, based on real data. We got real-time real data at the one second interval. Uh, we've got a 1, mega, uh, one MVA and 4 MVA gen set, um, as well as a 3.5 megawatt PV array and a 4 MVA battery. Um, and then each one of these relays, we also implemented realistic protection functions at various places, um, as well as developing realistic models of the, um, of the lines and transformers and loads. This is a system we end up building up. Um, so we've got our firewall here. Um, we've got our Opal RT interface box, uh, monitoring and analog I.O., um, the Opal RT target, and then our server and our power supply. And then this piece right here slides out, and we've got two actual Woodward Genset controllers, uh, Woodward Easy Gen 3000s, to do controller hardware loop. I'm going to show you uh, how those were connected in just a minute. So this is a block diagram of our setup. We've got the Opal RT unit, which is simulating our distribution system, uh, our one line, uh, simulating the relays, breakers, and, and uh, pulling out data, you know, phase angle, voltage, current uh, values um, that can be queried. We've got a simulated PV and inverter, simulated battery storage and power converter, simulated four MBA genset, simulated one MBA genset. And then two of those, we've got the two Woodward Easy gens controlling the simulated gensets. We basically tricked these into thinking they were controlling a real 13.8 kV genset. And then we've got the simulated um, controllers that we developed ourselves um, running inside the Opal RT unit, even though uh, in the future we're looking to get actual device controllers from real vendors to put them outside here. Um, we got some communication equipment. We've got a firewall, uh, a network switch that does some uh, IP translation. And then we've got our microcontrollers, basically the supervisory or tertiary controller. Um, which we were uh, testing. So I'm going to now uh, briefly go into, or rapidly go into, how we built up this system and um, then what we, what we did with it. So the first thing we did was we uh, uh, created a one-line diagram and a net list. We then wrote a script that would then port that net list into MATLAB Simulink model, which then gets ported into, um, well, we basically split into uh, three cores, and then uh, put it into the local RT unit. So that's the first step. Second step is we developed uh, power electronics models um, and machine models for the inverters, the battery power converter, and the genset. We put those into the Opal RT model. We then uh, got real-time load data um, over the course of our test window, which I think was so we had one test that was 15 minutes and another test that was two hours. Um, so we put those in as, as stimuli. We also put in um, two motors uh, so to test the inrush current that we didn't have a chance, we haven't had a chance to test that yet. Um, so that will be coming up soon. Then we developed some uh, device controllers. So we uh, developed a you know, software to mimic a um, SEL, SEL relay. Uh, we developed our own PV inverter controller, an average, um, based on the average PV inverter model. Uh, we developed our own genset controller and battery controller all in software. So we're looking to replace those in the future with, um, with actual hard, uh, controller in the loop, um, as shown here in this diagram. So we, we did get to the point of, of uh, integrating a Woodward Easy Gen 3000 to replace our simulated uh, genset controller. And we were able to swap back and forth running our, gen, our simulated genset off the Easy Gen versus running it off of the, um, uh, our, our own software controller 
as a way of validating our uh, control logic against the way that the EasyGen was running. We plan on doing that in the future for both the relays and um, you know, whatever um, uh, commercial inverter controller we end up getting. This shows a kind of more detailed diagram of how we tricked the Woodward Easy Gens into thinking that they were controlling a real gen set. So we had a model of the motor generator as well as the uh, two circuit breakers. We created our own model of the governor and AVR. And then we, um, in the Opal RT unit, took out the tachometer and voltage current um, signals, which come out at 16 uh, volts AC. And then we worked with Opal to develop an interface box, which then translates those you know, with small transformers and, and uh, voltage to current um, converters into the signals that the Woodward EasyGen expects to see. So uh, we take 16 volt AC measurements, convert those into 120 volts AC, and then those get fed into the Woodward EasyGen, which then feeds out uh, or controls the simulated gen set with the, uh, an AVR and governor signal. Um, so these are all the elements of our microcontroller hardware loop platform. Um, we also added some uh, radiance uh, variants to change the power output from the PV array, as well as a grid outage in the middle of our simulation. And then we integrated um, the system with a Schneider microgrid controller, as well as and Eaton microgrid controller, and then ran both of those through a test sequence to evaluate their, their behavior. So um, we're looking to integrate our system with additional commercial microcontrollers. If there are any callers on the line who'd be interested in talking to us about that, please uh, get in contact with me. Um, and uh, you know, we, we've, we've gotten some fairly good feedback from both Schneider and Eaton, as well as uh, some of their competitors about the potential value of this platform for uh, demonstrating uh, new project ideas and also doing risk reduction testing uh, for projects that have been approved. We also added some uh, real-time visualization and data collection and post-processing in order to be able to, in, in the future, uh, analyze results and be able to, in a, in a, you know, in a hard way, um, with hard metrics, compare performance between microgrid controllers uh, on, our, on our test bed. So on October 1st, um, a little bit over a month ago, we, uh, we used this HIL platform as the centerpiece of the Massachusetts Microcontrol Symposium, where we ran uh, both the Schneider and Eaton microcontrollers through a 15-minute test sequence, both on-grid and off-grid. Um, we showed the controllers controlling power factor. We showed them going into islanding and shedding um, non-critical loads controlling the gen sets, PV, and battery, and uh, maintaining a voltage um, profile while doing so. So our ultimate vision um, for the microcontroller platform has four elements. So first is a demonstration platform, which we've done. We've demonstrated the, you know, the capabilities of the Schneider and Eaton controllers um, and allowed side-by-side -side comparison of their performance. Our next goal is to have this be a commissioning platform. So identify an actual microgrid that's being deployed. We're currently working on two um, uh, micro projects. One is in Boston, as well as one that we're deploying here um, at Lincoln Laboratory. With the idea is that before you put any steel in the ground, you can test out um, all, the, all the control behavior. You can have your utility engineers you know, put various faults on the system and, and evaluate the behavior. You can do all the communications and controls integration. So basically get to the 80% or 90% completion um, on your you know, project integration and uh, system integration before any uh, hardware is actually deployed into the field. And third uh, vision is as a validation platform. So utilities you know, have, been, you know, have their own interconnection requirements. Uh, we see IEEE P23.8, which is the microgrid controller test standard on the horizon. Um, because of the high cost of building these sorts of test beds, we see controller hardware loop as a way to uh, validate the performance of uh, microcontrollers and device controllers against utility requirements and the 2038 standard without having to incur the large cost of building uh, power equipment. And then what, undergirds, what will undergird all this is an open source project that we're looking to develop that basically develops a repository of device models, test feeders, test scripts, 
interfaces, uh, conversion scripts that uh, the microgrid industry will be able to access um, based on, the, on you know, joining a consortium as a way to help accelerate deployment. So this is kind of our vision for the eventual capabilities. Um, you know, have actual device controllers and interfaces developed for all the different ERs that are out there as well as you know, protection devices. Be able to uh, integrate the, the you know, full set of microcontrollers that are out there in industry. Then also integrate with DMS and, and you know, third-party service providers in order to test out the behavior and controls and integration of not just microgrids, but also other uh, distribution system projects, such as large-scale DER deployments, uh, self-healing distribution systems, and whatnot, um, as a way to decrease the utility's perceived risk, decrease the perceived risk from project developers and financiers, and also uh, allow engineers to do the integration and testing well in advance. Now, this captures what I see as elements of uh, eventual open source uh, repository, uh, test feeders. The, 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 sorry, let me go back up. So the, the foundation is uh, the hardware loop platform. So you've got conversion scripts in order to get it to OpalRT. You've got validated device models, like for the gensets and, and uh, power converters, ideally validated by the vendors themselves and then validated device controller software uh, for the cases where you can't get the uh, controllers on your bench tub. Then uh, the next step is to build up the control in the loop repository, so getting the interface circuitry that I showed earlier, um, actual physical circuitry in order to trick the device controllers into thinking they're controlling their actual targets, developing that interface code, and then also the communication interface uh, translation code. Once you have that, then you can develop um, tests based on that platform, test feeders, test stimuli, and post-processing post -processing scripts for evaluating test results. And I see all of this eventually going into this open source repository um, for which we've gotten a fair amount of interest from industry and utilities um, and project developers. So um, I know that was a whirlwind tour of our project. I want to acknowledge our sponsors, Sarah, Mahmoud and Jalama Parr at DHS S&T, Dan Tan as part of Energy, Office of Electricity. There were a number of divisions at, at the lab that worked on this effort. We had a number of excellent collaborators in industry and in the, the government sector for making this happen. And here's my contact information for anyone who would like to reach out to me. So thank you very much, Eric, for your um, collaboration. And uh, please stay online for the um, until the end, where we'll have our um, questions uh, session. So just before concluding this uh, webinar, we have our second poll on which we'd have to have your input on the following question: What do you consider the most challenging aspect of microgrid real-time simulation? Now you can select only one in this case. So simulation of large AC systems with very short lines accuracy of fast power electronics, integration of communication protocols, hardware in the loop as part of a more global testing environment, or other? Thank you. And so in conclusion, well, you see that uh, we have the expertise in understanding your needs and uh, we deliver what's best for it, okay? And this is based on the multiple microgrid applications that we have successfully achieved in the past years. Uh, we have fast and powerful power systems and power electronic tools dedicated to microgrids such as Artemis, SSN, EHS, various communication protocols as well. And uh, we are very open to collaborations and partnerships that you might have in mind, as you saw that uh, we did with MIT Lincoln Laboratory. So for more information, where our new microgrid web page is now online uh, starting this morning, so you can access most of the information presented in this webinar on our web page. We invite you, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one demo or have any additional technical or commercial related questions, you can contact us directly. 
Um, on our event page, you'll see where you can meet us. Uh, all of our events throughout the world are displayed by um, geographical region. And uh, the content of this webinar, it's actually being recorded. Um, you will have access to it in a few days on our website as well. So I would like you, all of you, thank you very much for your attention, staying until the end. And um, now for the period of questions, there will be um, multiple questions in the chat. And what we will do is that for those questions that we won't have time to answer live, we will um, record them and answer them and send back the answers to you uh, as soon as possible. Also, our founder and CEO, Jean Belanger, is here with us to uh, help any answer, any, answer, any questions you might have. So uh, we will start the process now. Okay, hi, Opal RT team. Besides the digital and analog outputs, how do we get data out of the simulation? Is there a kind of built-in scope? So, well, at the hardware level, we have uh, different solutions to monitor analog and digital IOs. We support various communication protocols that are either Ethernet-based or uh, things like uh, serial communication protocols, RS-232. And we have the capability to record data in real time as well, uh, which would act as a built-in scope for post-processing. Is that two microsecond time step requirement still true if one uses average models for the power electronics? Or is that directly related to the use of full switching models? So basically, we have the capability to simulate power electronic converters, both on the CPU side and on the FPGA side. Um, it really depends uh, about the complexity of the power converter and also what is the frequency of the PWM that is required. I would say that typically anything below five, two, well, two to five kilohertz could be viable on the CPU, but anything above five kilohertz uh, should be achieved on FPGA. And it's really that two microsecond time step is really the full closed time loop with a controller uh, connected to the real time simulation. Um, Eric, we have a question for you. Uh, what did Ethan and Schneider learn from the various tests that you have done? Hello, Eric. Eric, you I think you're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, good. Um, so I, I think you'll have to ask Schneider and Eaton that question, but um, we did... Uh, you know, in the process of integrating with their controllers, we, you know, we uh, had to work through a number of uh, communication challenges in communicating with uh, the GenSec controllers and with the um, simulated other device controllers. Um, you know, the, the feedback we got from them was, was fairly positive in that uh, we were able to demonstrate their capabilities in kind of a third, uh, third party independent neutral way. Um, but we'll, we will be uh, issuing a, or publishing a report on the, uh, on the demonstration platform and the and the symposium, and I think that will that report will you know contain a lot of details about the integration process and what we learned along the way. Um, if I may, I also want to answer the question about communication and uh, scoping. So we used um, uh, we, we uh, one, one of the, the blocks in the Opal RT system sent out data as UT, UDP packets. So any any data that we want to display in real time, we send out as UDP in our our visualization uh, interface cap caught that data and, and put up on the screen. And then uh, a more extensive set of data we stored um, on the OPLRT unit and then downloaded it after the test for, for post-process. So we use both of those uh, capabilities. All right, I think we have uh, one more question for you. Uh, when using the real-time controllers from the industry, how do they connect the actual PWM signals for the PV inverters? Um, or do they just use the average controllers? If that's the case, how do they connect to the real controller to the OPAL RT? So we have not yet um, 
integrated the, uh, the PV inverter controller or battery controller, the actual hardware, uh, you know, control boards. Um, so far, we, we've uh, just done the Woodward Genset controller where the feedback is the AVR and governor signals. Um, chances are that uh, when we get to that point, we'll have to change our average model to a switching model such that uh, the, uh, we can interpret the you know, gate drive signals properly from the, the control boards. Okay, and uh, one more question for you. Are there documents available about MIT Lincoln Lab microgrid test bed? Uh, yes, so we have um, uh, this presentation which been, has been made public and we are in the process of releasing a, uh, a public report, fairly extensive report on our platform and uh, the symposium and the integration process. So that will be coming out shortly. Okay, thank you. Um, one question here uh, for OpalRT, is this a built-in graphical user interface platform or customers should create on their own uh, based on what was seen in the, in the demo? So actually, the uh, graphical interface that we saw was based on National Instruments LabVIEW software. Okay, so the actual panels that you saw, we uh, can deliver them to you so you can use them as is. Or if you have LabVIEW, you can create your own and have full flexibility over there. Um, I, I want to add one more thing uh, about the uh, um, our platform, if I may. Go ahead. Um, so in addition to um, publishing a report, we're actually going to be publishing all of our uh, source code and test scripts um, as a package. So that will be available for download by anybody once we get through the approval process. So anybody can, can we will take that code and, and uh, run the same simulation that we ran um, uh, on, on their platform. Thank you. And we have a very interesting uh, question here for RT. How we can get this simulator? Well, I think it's fairly easy. You can uh, give us a call or email us or website. Uh, we'll give you all the contact information. Uh, so you can uh, get in touch with us uh, as soon as you are ready. Now I'm seeing one question. How much time step is required for simulating motors? So actually, uh, this is an interesting question because in the past we used to simulate the motors directly on, on CPU having uh, different types of asynchronous machines or uh, blocks like this. But more and more, uh, we're porting motor models directly on FPGA and because they interact with very fast power converters as well. So we are talking about below one microseconds for a detailed uh, PMSM or induction motor or switch reluctance motors. If I want to connect two microgrids simulated in two different Opal RT simulators, is there any communication method to connect them together like using protocol? Well, I would say that it depends on the application that you are doing. If you are doing something like multi-system uh, agent, you would eventually prefer having hardwire analog and digital IOs between the two simulation platforms. And uh, this is where we saw that we had this uh, control board based on Texas Instruments microcontroller, which can interact directly with our simulators using analog and digital IOs. If you are more into something like super visory control and uh, running, let's say, SCADA system in one simulator and the network or the virtual grid in the other system, then yes, it is possible to interface with the various communication protocols that we have discussed, such as IEC 61850, DNP3, Modbus, C37118, etc. That's much better. How much does it cost to buy the simulator of this microgrid? Well, actually, it will uh, depend on the various uh, communication protocols that you would require, IOs that you would require, what is the size of this the microgrid in terms of number of components. Um, but of course, with the expertise that we have acquired throughout the years for such simulation, uh, the easiest way would actually to contact us. And uh, from there, we can issue you a uh, budgetary quotation that would fit exactly your needs. Eric, if you are still here, yep, I'm here. We have a question: Why you are not integrating an OPC server to read different points for supervision, supervisory control? Um, 
So we, when we were first developing this platform, we were on a fairly tight schedule. And we sent out um, some questionnaires to uh, the vendors we were going to potentially work with. And we asked them, what would be the easiest way to integrate um, our system or the simulation system with their controller? And the feedback we got was that the, the fastest way for them to do the integration would be um, if we gave them the ability to read the uh, telemetry data directly via Modbus and then um, and then for them to be able to act on that. So all the communications between the, you know, the relays, the protect, you know, the, the gen set, the PV, sorry, the PV array and the batteries all via Modbus. In the future we may, um, or we, we hope to develop you know, some more sophisticated um, telemetry systems and, and microcontroller architectures, but given the short timeline we were on, I think all of this was developed in just a handful of months. Um, we, uh, you know, based on, on industry feedback, we, we took, you know, took the Mopus approach. Okay, thank you. Uh, one question that we have here for Opal RT: Are there any power hardware in the loop or hardware in the loop already in place for the Opal RT demo case? What sort of linear amplifier has been either used or are under consideration for the Opal RT demo case? Well, in the past years, we've been working with um, Exton, with uh, Amatech, with Triphase, and with Puissance Plus, which are uh, four different. Uh, four quadrant amplifier manufacturers. Okay, some use linear technologies, some use switching technologies. So, depending on what you want to interface, uh, we can go for one option or another. In our case, what we try to achieve is to have a very stable system with the shortest uh, closed loop time as possible. Okay, and depending if you're going to connect to a, a load, to a grid emulator, to a PV emulator or even to a motor test bench, then uh, we really try to find the right amplifier uh, with you. And uh, so you can contact us on this. Okay. okay, we have one question here. As I know, PSCAD uses some correcting algorithm in order to reduce simulation error. Is this algorithm used in your real-time simulator to reduce simulator errors? For example, first FIRST algorithm is a good option in this criteria that, that is developed for using uh, in real-time simulators. Yes, we have uh, implemented such a solver back in the year 2000 for Toyota. We call it our time-stamp bridge where we measure the instant of the switching, uh, when the switching occurs in, in the preceding step and we make the, the correction in the next step. So we cannot use uh, what PSCAD has, in, has introduced for real-time application because they are they are allowed to go back in time. But in our in our case, this is a standard technique. We call it our time stamp bridge since more than year 2000. Do your system has any possibility to test different methods for control of your device, like adapt? control logic, fuzzy logic, etc. Well, I would answer this one by saying that the platform we support is a fully open uh, MATLAB Simulink environment in which you can develop any type of control algorithms and our objective is to run them in real time. Okay, So we uh, give you the capability to do hardware in the loop with an external controller, but we also give you the capability to do rapid control prototyping where the control algorithms are being uh, simulated on the real-time platform and you can interact with actual equipment uh, in the lab or in the field. All right, so uh, we are done. Uh, we are done for today. As mentioned earlier, all the questions that were not answered live uh, will be answered in uh, shortly. Probably next week, we'll try to uh, contact you with answers to your question. Thank you very much for your.